This is Tom Asper with the Viper Report. It's Friday afternoon, about an hour before the close. I want to give you an update on the market. It's been kind of a choppy week. This chart of the daily of the SPY shows you that on Tuesday we hit the R2 resistance level. It was at 394.61 and the high Tuesday was 294.17. So we came pretty close. The daily technical studies are still positive. You can see the AD line here. We dropped a little bit below the uptrend line C here at the end of January. Reversed sharply to the upside, moved above its moving average, and since then it's been clearly positive. We've weakened a little bit this week, but uh, did recently make a new high, so you know could pull back to its moving average. And uh, if it breaks the moving average, that may mean we're going to see a little more choppy to lower action. Similar picture from the NYSE stocks only AD line. Also saw it came right into support, right where it broke out of at the start of the year, and has also declined here. It has a converging support down in here, which uh, should definitely hold if we, even if we get a deeper decline in that average. In my teaching about the market, I place a fair amount of emphasis on daily action as well as weekly action. So if you uh, see a week where the stock market opens strong and then closed weak, it's kind of a reversal that generally suggests, you know, a loss of buying power, which is a short-term negative. This is an hourly chart of the S&P 500. You can see we closed strong a week ago Friday. And... Uh, we were higher from the open, but on Tuesday, we generally declined, you know, made a low here on Wednesday, rallied up till about the last hour, and then finished week, bottomed out Thursday, and rallied sharply on Thursday and early Friday, but right now, we're back in negative territory. So that's kind of characteristic of a tired market. You know, we use up the buyers early in the morning. By the time the day gets old, there are no buyers left. I've been talking about the high levels of bullishness and the complacency in the market. And uh, that sentiment is sort of consistent with la this week's action. Uh, this is one indicator I, I teach about and follow quite closely, particularly for option traders and the tech stocks. It's quite valuable. It's the percentage of NASDAQ 100 stocks above their 10-day moving average. So you can see when we peaked here in October, we were up here almost uh, over 90%. Bam, we declined into the end of the month. We got down to under 14%. So recently, we, we got down to about 13% here in the end of January, rallied up back up to about 79% and have turned lower. So, uh, we could finish strong the last hour of trading, uh, but if not, I think it'll probably decline further. Uh, the best risk new positions occur, you know, in that uh, 20 to 10 zone. A little longer term perspective, I do look at the same analysis on the S&P 500, except in this case, it's the percentage of stocks above their 50 day moving average. It also got quite low here at the end of January, got down to just above 40%. Really good bottoms here occur under 30%. You can see in, in September and at the end of October. So it's sort of had, you know, it's been eroding, you know, a series of, it peaked here in November. If we drop much below 65 or 60, it will be consistent with a pullback in the market. I looked at the intraday action in the S&P 500. This is the intraday action in the QQQs, a 60-minute chart. And you can see we we dropped down here, bottomed out uh, early yesterday, had a nice rally. We got right back to the weekly pivot here. We had a high of 33.99. The weekly pivot is at 34.19, so we failed just below it. And now we're back down. Wouldn't want to see us drop below 33.28.36. If we do, then it's more likely to see a drop back into that 320 to 324 area. The intraday studies are looking a little more negative uh, in the last couple of days. That's not a great sign either.
course, I have been concerned about the market for the last couple of weeks, uh, it being overextended and seeing the sentiment being pretty complacent. This is one of the longer term indicators I look. This is the Russell 2000 small cap had a great run, but uh, this is a weekly chart. So right now, um, you know, we're we're down about 1.2 percent uh, for the week. But you can see this indicator here measures the percentage that the IWM is above its 20 week EMA. Current reading of that is 15 or 14.6, I guess, or 15 roughly. So why is that significant? Well, let's look at some longer term history. You can see that, you know, in uh, the end of 2016, we got above 10 percent. Yeah, and then we look at from the bear market low, we got about up to 13 percent. But we have never been this high since the IWM has traded. Um, back off the 2003 low, we are also at 13%. So that's an extreme case that suggests that it should come down, you know, into, you know, closer to that 20 week EMA or even test it. You can see that some good buying opportunities have occurred when it's dropped back to the 20 period, you know, and, uh, and last year, you know, in uh, September of 2019, dropped below it. Also in August, you know, and then back in the end of 2018, you know, we are down near the lower Stark bands, and we're also down 15% below its moving average. I hope some of you are able to view my post that I did recently about a course on applying pivot point analysis and Stark bands to the market. It's still up on the YouTube site, and if you're interested in future videos, that's uh, you, you might consider signing up. Uh, you'll get the first notification for new videos. This gives you a pretty good deal of how I uh, use them. I got really good feedback from those who attended, and if you did happen to watch it, there's a survey form in the email. Please fill it out. And let me know what topics you'd like me to cover in my next video class. I hope you found that update on the markets beneficial. I've been starting to post all my articles from Forbes on the Viper Report since Forbes has introduced a, a charge system that makes it tough for you. Um, as always, you can go to theviperreport.com um, and look at either the Viper ETF or the Hot Stocks Report. If you're interested in some training, there's a link to the special offer that's still working uh, for 90 minutes with me one-on-one -on -one teaching. Complete a couple of sections this last week and I think I really helped a couple of traders um, if you want to learn more about it here's sort of the details um, pretty much every session lasts longer than 90 minutes and I have been following up with the clients because teaching and being sure you understand is an important part of this process and uh, um, so that's a key goal in my mind and I think I can help you if you're willing to do some work and uh, if you'd like specific advice of course, either of my services will provide that, just thirty-four ninety-five a month. So I hope you have an okay weekend and hope the weather gets more accommodative for all of us. Thank you.